first problem jump game one, you are given an array and you just have to determine if you can reach the very end or not. Correct? This problem is almost similar. You are given a certain scenario and it is guaranteed that you can reach the very end. You just have to tell me what is the minimum number of jumps required so that you can start at the beginning and reach the very end. So the solution will differ a little bit from the original approach. Let's see what we can do about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we'll look at some sample test cases. Going forward, we will see the brute force approach, dynamic approach, recursive approach and see why they are so much time taking. Going forward, we will see a greedy approach and see why it is so efficient and so easy to use. After that, we will also do a dry run so that you can visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's try to make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given an array and each element represents the maximum jump possible from that particular index, correct? And then you just have to determine the minimum number of jumps required to reach the last index. So what does this actually mean? Let us look at one of the test cases. So for our first test case, my array looks like this. It simply means that you have some kind of a staircase and you're standing over here. Now you have to reach the very last index. And what is the condition? Each of these elements, they are telling me what is the maximum jump you can make. So from this position, either you can jump one place or you can jump two places, right? So how can you reach the very last index? One scenario could be that, okay, I make one jump from over here, right? Now I am at this position and now I can make a maximum of three jumps, right? So either I go here or I do this or I do this. My best possible condition is if I take three jumps from the second staircase, right? Then I will reach the last index. So what did I do? I made one jump over here and then one jump like this. So I did a total of two jumps, right? So this is one case. There are other ways also you can reach the last index. For example, one situation could be I make two jumps from over here and now I can just make one jump of one step. So I will land here. Once again, I can only make one jump. So I will make one more jump. So this way I took a total of three jumps, correct? So out of all of such different combinations, the minimum jumps will come out to be two. That is when you take one jump like this and the second jump like this. So for the first test case, your answer will be two. Similarly, let us look at the second test case and it is a much bigger array. This simply means that there will be a lot of different combinations. Just think about it. If I'm at the first step, right? I can take a maximum of two jumps. So what happens if I take two jumps? I reach here, then I can only take one step. I make one more jump. Now I can make two. Let us say I make two, one more again, and then I will reach over here. So you see, I am taking so many jumps. The best solution, it will come when I am standing over here and I make one jump over here. Now I have a maximum of four steps, right? Instead of four, just take three jumps. So you will land over here. And this time, once again, you can take three jumps. So take this jump and you reach over here. So how many total jumps did you take? You took a total of three jumps, correct? So for your second test case, three will be your answer. So basically, you will have so many different combinations how you can reach the last index. And it is guaranteed that you will be able to reach the last index in some way or the other. You just have to tell me what is the minimum number of jumps required. So if you feel that now this problem statement is even clear to you, feel free to first try it out on your own. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. Let us start understanding the problem even more. The most naive way and the brute force approach will be that you find out all the different combinations. So one approach will be two, four, three, and then two. The other approach could be two, one, two, one, one again, one again, and then two. And then similarly, you will have so many different combinations of how you can reach the very end, correct? You just find out all of them and then determine that, hey, this is the minimum number of jumps required. You can already see that it will take up a lot of time and it is not a correct solution. So definitely you will want to improve. 
So you try to think, okay, what other information do I have available? Since it is an array, you also know all of these indices, right? So the first element is at 0th index and the last element is at 7th index. Somehow you have to reach this last index 7, correct? So you can try to approach this problem in a recursive way. What happens? You start at the first index that is 0, correct? And now how many ways you can jump? You can jump a total of two ways, correct? Either you will make one jump or you will make two jumps, right? So if you make one jump, where do you land? You land at four, right? Or the first index. If you make two jumps, so where do you land? You land at the second index. Now, once again, from both of these positions, you can make further jumps. The first index points at the element four. That means from this position, I can make four different jumps. And with each of these jumps, where do I land? I will land at all of these four indices, correct? Similarly, from the second position, how many jumps you can make? You can only make one jump. And where does this land you? It lands you at the next position and that is position number three. So once again, what will you do now? You have all these four positions and then you will try to see, okay, what can I do? From this position two, you can just make one jump. What else you can do? From this position three, you can make two jumps. What can you do from your next position? That is four. You can make a total of three jumps. So if you try to analyze, what are we doing over here? At every instance, we are trying to determine, okay, where can we reach? And if you see correctly, this is kind of a recursive property, right? Because what will happen next? You already evaluated what happens at position number two. And at this position, you will find this exact same tree. So this is a recursive property and you will keep on expanding the tree. Ultimately, you have to reach position seven, right? As soon as you reach this last index, you stop and you determine, okay, what were the jumps needed? So this was one jump, then a second jump, and then a third jump. So in a total of three jumps, you were able to reach the very last index, right? So this approach is in fact correct and it will also give you a correct answer every time. But it is so much time taking and it can become really complex if you try to understand this recursion. If you want to optimize it, what you can do is you can try to memoize all of these results. For example, you can just try to store somewhere that, okay, if I'm at position two, what is the jumps required? If I'm at position three, what is the minimum number of jumps required? That way you don't have to solve for all of these separate conditions. This will be dynamic programming. And once again, it will take up a lot of time. So neither of these approaches is gonna work. So we can rule out both of these techniques and then try a greedy approach. Once again, I have my sample array and let us say I am standing over here, right? So when you're solving problems with a greedy approach, you have to decide, okay, what will be your greed criteria? I can say that, okay, I am being greedy. So I will try to take the maximum amount of jump possible, right? What will happen then? You are currently at this position and you take a jump of two. Where did you reach? One. Once again, you take a maximum jump and you reach two. You again take a maximum jump possible. You are reach over here, then here and then at the very end, right? But you realize, hey, I jumped so many times and certainly this is not a correct greed criteria, right? So let us go back to the start position and think of something else. Right now, you are at the very start position, correct? So this is the only element available to you. This is your window. You can only choose to decide from two jumps. Either you make one jump or you make two jumps, right? That is all you can do right now. So what I can say is, if I am at the starting position, what is the farthest I can go? The farthest I can go is two, right? So I just make a marker and currently I'm saying that, okay, if I am over here, then this is the maximum I can reach, right? So what is this telling you? If you jump from the position that you're standing, how far you can go? You can only go far up till this point, right? So I did my first jump and for the second jump, this is my only window. 
I can only choose elements from this second window, right? I cannot choose any other elements. So this tells me that, okay, I made one jump. But right now I have not decided, okay, where am I jumping from next? Right now I just know that if I make my first jump, this is the window that I will land, correct? Now follow step by step. Once again, my greed criteria is from all of my available options, where can I jump the maximum, right? So if I am at element number four, what is the maximum jump I can make? I can make a jump of four and then where will I land? I will land at this particular index, right? So I can safely say that I can move my flag over here because I know for a fact that if I will choose an element from this window, then this is the farthest I can reach, right? But you have to explore all of the other elements as well. So you decide that, okay, what if, if I jump from this next element, how far you can go? You can only make one jump, right? And then you will land at this index. So either you can reach this position or you can reach this position. What is the farthest? This is the farthest. So that is why I have updated my maximum flag up till this point. So out of this window, you have determined that I will reach a maximum of this point, correct? So this tells me that in two jumps, this is the farthest I can go. So this gives you a window for your third jump. Basically, you covered two jumps and now you have to decide, okay, where do I go next? Once again, you will apply the same approach. You see that, okay, what is the farthest I can go from this index? You can only make two jumps, right? So I will reach here. This is already available, so you don't have to update it. Where can you reach if you choose your next jump from this index? You can make a jump of three, right? So you can reach all the way to the very end, right? So what I do is I update my flag and I move it over here. Technically, you can just stop over here because you know that, hey, I have reached the end. But algorithmically, you will want to explore all of these other indices as well. So where can you go from the next index? You can just go over here. So out of all the three values, either here, either here or here, the farthest is this index, right? So I update my farthest index to this particular index, right? And as soon as you update this farthest index to your last index, that is where you stop. And you can say that, hey, this was the minimum jumps required. So how many jumps did you make? This was the first jump. Then this was the second jump and then this is the third jump, right? So the total number of jumps required is three and with just a single scan and being greedy, you were able to determine an optimal solution. Your greed criteria was that, okay, out of all of the available options, what is the maximum coverage I can get? And that led you to an optimal answer. Now let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how it works in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, once again, I have an array that is passed in as an input parameter to the function jump. And I have also mentioned all of these indices of the array and they will be helpful. Starting off with the dry run, we initialize a few things. So first of all, total jumps. This is gonna store how many jumps are required. And right now it is initialized to zero. The next thing we initialize is the destination. That what is the last index that we have to reach? And that will certainly be the last index, right? That is seven. So my destination is seven. And then we explore two more variables. That is coverage. That will tell me that, okay, this is how far I can go. And last jump index will tell me that, hey, this was the point where I could reach, correct? So right now, both of these values are zero because currently I'm just standing over here, right? And I don't have any coverage. As we move ahead, first of all, we have a base case that if your array just has a single element, then that is the final element itself, right? You don't have to jump anywhere. So you simply return a zero. Now moving on with our for loop, and that is the greedy strategy. We will try to extend our coverage as far as possible. We start from the first element and then go all the way up to the very end. And what do we do in this loop? First of all, we try to update our coverage. So the coverage will be the maximum value of current value of coverage that you have and wherever you are standing. So I'm standing at position two 
and the current value is zero. So what is the maximum coverage? That will be current element plus two, right? That is exactly what we are doing over here. So I update my coverage and now coverage is two. That is telling me that, hey, this is the farthest I can reach. In the next if condition, we check if we have traversed through all of our available options. When you just started over here, the only option available to you was just this first index, that is zero, right? So i is currently equal to this last jump index, right? So what do you do? You will first update your last jump index and that is equal to coverage because we have determined that this is the maximum we can go, right? So once again, in our next iteration, we will try all of these possibilities and basically we have extended our window, what we can explore. And this certainly means that we made our first jump, right? So we do total jumps plus plus. Now we check, have we already reached the destination? No, right? So this loop will now run again. And what do you do now? Once again, you will try to update your coverage. Currently, I am at this first element, right? So I check, is my coverage greater than where I can reach, right? So the value of coverage is 2 right now, but i plus nums of i. This will land me at this next position. This is greater than coverage, right? So I will update my value of coverage. Basically, I am just updating my window, right? I know that I can travel all the way up till here. Check this if condition now. You are checking if i is equal to the last index. i is not equal to the last jump index. That means I have not explored my window completely. So we ignore this and this loop will now run again. The value of i updates. And once again, we will try to update our coverage. What do you see? The value of coverage is 5. And from this position, what is the maximum index that you can reach? That is current index plus this value. So I can only reach 3. 5 is already greater, so we don't update it. What happens in the if loop now? i now equals to this last jump index. That means I have covered my entire window. This means that I have made one more jump and we will update our total jumps. At the same time, I have updated my value of last jump index to coverage. This simply means that this is my next window up till the n index 5. So once again, this loop will run and you will try to update the coverage for all of these three new elements. You will try to update these values and check at every moment if your coverage is equal to or greater than the destination. At any point, if you are able to reach the destination, just simply return the total number of jumps. Otherwise, this loop will complete and then at the very end, this will be returned as your answer. The time complexity of this solution turns out to be order of n because you only do one iteration of the entire array and the space complexity of this solution is order of one because you do not need any extra space to arrive at your solution. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As for my final thoughts, I just want to say that whenever you decide that, okay, I will solve this problem using a greedy approach. Always first prove out to the interviewer that a greedy approach will give you the correct answer and an optimal solution. If you choose the incorrect greed criteria, that can lead you to an incorrect answer. Think about it. If you just choose your number based upon how high it is, then it is not necessary that you will take the minimum number of jumps. So always find your greed criteria correctly. So while going through this problem, did you have any doubts or have you seen any other such problems which work on a similar greed criteria? Tell me everything in the comment section below. It will become a nice collection of all such similar problems and it will be helpful for any of us. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also, a huge shout out to all the members who support my channel. It really keeps me motivated. Until next time, see ya.